thought we would use this um, Christmas party as a soft launch for a crazy new business venture called Pitt Street Poetry. And uh, as you might have seen on the sign over there, with uh, the financial system crumbling and uh, Europe on its knees and uh, the whole publishing industry rapidly becoming obsolete, it seemed no better time really than to, uh, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> to, to start a new imprint for what is recognised universally as the most uncommercial <laughs> literary sector of them all, which is poetry, but of course also the most important. Uh, and uh, John will tell you a little bit more about how we came to, uh, to, to dream this up, but it's an absolute thrill for me tonight to have um, to the, the two poets uh, who, who will, will be publishing in 2012. I'm the very oldest poet in our collection, John. <laughs> Not that much. Oldest because, um, no, oldest, no, oldest friend because we've known each other since we were teenagers. We actually ran a poetry magazine together when we were still students. Um, I've gone on to have an attention deficit disorder and do many different things in my career. John Stuckman Poetry and is now um, uh, a much loved uh, and revered uh, national icon of poetry with A. Hawksley's name uh, and the ninth one in the, in the pipeline, which we'll be publishing and a string of awards as long as you're. Um, so John, um, it's wonderful that our friendship has um, culminated in this um, idiotic and uh, <laughs> crazy publishing adventure, which I'm so excited by. But we also have the youngest poet uh, in the stable, in the Jean Kent. And I say the youngest because um, the contract which she's about to sign is sitting over there on my desk, and um, it's minus about five minutes until she, the, the Dino, when she actually joins Pitt Street Poetry. I know many of you know John very, very well, and it may be that you don't know Jean as well, but Jean is also a very eminent Australian poet, and it's a real privilege to be publishing uh, her book. Uh, and just very briefly, um, you might not know that her first book won, Miranda's won the Anne Elder Prize and the Mary Gilmore Award, and was shortlisted for the New South Wales State Literary Awards. The third collection, the Saturn Bowerbird, won the Martin Wesley and Michelle Wright Prize. And um, this new book, which is going to be called Travelling with the Wrong Phrase Books, uh, has already won, won an award because it was highly commended in the ACT Alec Dalton Award for Unpublished Manuscripts of the Poetry. So, Jane, welcome to the family. It's a real privilege to be uh, publishing uh, your, your next book. And I, I hope this first year of history poetry um, will be uh, successful, exciting, and a great adventure. And uh, I really look forward to learning from Lindsay, who's oh. been doing this for 30 years. No, and no, no. To, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying to my colleagues here that I do. Yeah. Thank you, John, for your amazing beliefs. If it all goes wrong, <laughs> land up. <laughs> so, <laughs> thanks so much. So, um, perhaps I'll just hand over to John to say a, a few words, and then I think Jean's actually going to read to us briefly. John, over to you. Actually, Jean's, Jean's won more prizes than I have. Uh, and, and this is sort of um, a lot more of thinking, you know, sort of, but this is, is really lovely because we first met each other in 1988 uh, when we both won the National Library Poetry Award together. Uh, and now we, <laughs> so, uh, I mean, we've seen each other once since then. So, but, but now, um, you know, um, synchronicity and all that sort of thing. Uh, we were both uh, the last two um, residents at the Keesing Studio in Paris, which is a uh, the literature board has this studio they give out to writers for six months. Um, and I had it this time last year, and then Jean followed me straight afterwards. And both of the books that we're getting published with John are both actually about the experience of being in Paris in that situation. So it's, it's a lovely um, sort of synchronicity, again, that what we have been in this situation. I was talking to John when I came back from Paris uh, and we were talking about the death of the book um, and we both felt the same thing that uh, so many people still say oh the book will never die and all that sort of thing and it won't um, but it will change, it will change its form and the way in which it, it operates and John talked to put this bold idea to me he said you know what people will buy books for in the future they will only buy books in the future because they're beautiful objects um, they, if, if they just want to read something, they'll do it online. And he used the example that he always buys, I've never met anyone who does this, but he always buys and reads the long list of the Booker Prize. 
uh, every year, right? Uh, and John said that last year was the first year that he actually bought two thirds of the books as e-books, uh, and because it was so much cheaper, and that was the way things were going to go. And we got talking and thought a couple of things. Well, yes, yes, doing this with poetry is a ridiculous idea because um, it is totally. We, we, we can tell John, and we did warn him, uh, that it's not, it's, it's, um, it's not viable financially at all. And John, and John said, I don't care if we're going to do this. And the idea, and the way in which the thing is set up, is he said, you don't publish a book anymore. What you do is you make an e-strategy, uh, a digital strategy. So you set up a website, and then through that website, you, um, when you come to the stage of publication, you publish your book, in three forms, as an e-book for five bucks, as a print-on-demand for 20, which is just like a normal book, obviously, and a limited edition illustrated hardback version as well uh, for 50. And he said, people will buy that one um, because it's a beautiful object. Um, and so I have to say, John, that was the thing that I found so exciting. I've never been in hardback before. <laughs> <laughs> And, and so next May, we're actually doing this on those three forms. And over here, we have, um, they're just um, scanned versions, aren't they, of, a, of an artist, I'm, a Swiss artist I met in um, Paris, whose name is um, Judith Villiger, who's done the illustrations for the hardback edition. And it's so funny, because everybody I tell about the strategy, they say, um, oh, put me down for one of those. Uh, and I actually think that, that we're going to, it might be ironic, we might spend, send, um, sell more of the limited editions than we do of the other two, who knows. But since the website got set up, but, which I think was brilliantly done by Paul and John, I think it's a, it's a wonderful website. Um, one, my, my publisher of my last book, which was published in um, 2008, rang me the other day and um, he did quite a large print run for a book of poetry and he said, I have something to tell you. He, he said that, um, that the, the book chugged along quite happily for a while, um, you know, selling as poetry does, you know, a bit here and there. And he said, over the last three or four months, it's, it's almost sold out. And he said, I think your book has been set on a, a curriculum somewhere, because it, I used to have poetry in that situation. And I thought, no, it's not been set anywhere. What's happened is the website. Because John made a link on the website uh, directly to uh, that publisher and the book. And it, it to me, um, suggests that the whole strategy is a very, is it possibly one that actually might work? Uh, because, <laughs> because my book is sold out, I think, because it's been connected with the website. So it's a, it's a terribly exciting thing. Uh, and um, I really look forward to it. And we, we are the beginning. Um, but we've already got two other poets uh, in, in the wings. And uh, I said to John, if this works, uh, we're going to be, they'll, they'll, poets will be knocking down the doors uh, to, to get into this. And he asked me to be uh, his poetry editor, and I said yes, because the only people who ever get into it are anthologies of Australian poetry are editors because we put them in, because they know they can have <laughs> This is my entry into all this <laughs> anthology, so I'm so looking forward to it, John, and thank you so much. And let's hand over to Jane. <laughs> Thanks, John. Um, well, I'm absolutely incredibly grateful to both Johns. When I was in Paris, um, John had already written to me and told me about this amazing thing that was happening with his book, and I felt so envious. <laughs> This sounds like the most wonderful way to be published. So to actually be part of the enterprise, I just feel so honored and grateful. And it is really, really exciting. Um, to be a part of Australia, really, you don't expect to be noticed because that's just the way it is. You know you're probably going to have a little dedicated group of people who search out poetry. But to have somebody put such faith in publishing poetry is Thank you. Now, because it is a poetry launch, a poetry publishing launch, I thought rather than talk in book, I read your poem. As John said, I was in the Paris studio as well. I was actually there, I've been incredibly lucky and was able to go in 1994 as well. 
And that was the days before email, so a really curious thing happened. I thought, I'll go to Paris, I'll send beautiful postcards of Paris back to Australia, which I did. But my family and friends sent equally beautiful postcards of Australia back to Paris. This was just such an extraordinary thing to happen that inevitably a poetic sequence came out of it, which I call Postcard Ping Pong. And the one I'm going to read you today is about receiving a postcard of a picture of Sydney Harbour. It's called Sydney Harbour on a Summer's Day. It is the end of November, a monarch's shell dull, mute day when I find Sydney Harbour in a small, dry kitchen hall where the Guardian grudgingly dumps the mail. I can't believe this bluer than wet, white and blue. It smashes out of the dark French foyer like a souvenir perspex paperweight of the Eiffel Tower with all its artificial Copper sulfate air suddenly splashing free. The photograph of what should be so familiar looks so peculiar. It looks like an electrically charged creature which could skid off the top of the TV where I try to balance it. And when I walk out and lock the heavy studio door, Behind me the room drowns in 40 years of copybook quick. It is the end of November, a dull, mute day. When I burst out to the street, schoolgirls in black are spilling from the nearby lycée into their narrow lunchtime break. Between stacked high eggshell pale stone the soft air offers us its secret scene five minutes later my hands are on the rounded stone of a bridge across the sand i am here familiar unfamiliar water flows under me as replete with its own glow as an oyster Jean, Jean and John, thank you very much. We're not going to say anything more. We thought that Pitt Street Poetry was the perfect name for this venture with the traffic of Pitt Street flowing outside and a balcony to sit and, and watch it on. Um, please follow our fortunes with interest. The next time you hear about us, we'll be in touch with you trying to sell you a book. If you'd like to hear more about it, there is a sign-up um, clipboard there and you can put your email address and we'll keep you posted um, when the books are published. Thank you very much for coming tonight and Merry Christmas. Thank you.